Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're App Smashing Part 2. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge, and today I want to talk about App Smashing the second part. So a few weeks ago, we talked about app smashing, the way we can take a product from one app to another and then make something new with it to extend what apps can do. So the saying is there's an app for it, but sometimes you want to treat an app multiple times or to treat a product multiple times until you get exactly what you wanted to. And we've actually seen kids on all kinds of grades, starting in first grade, going all the way to sixth grade in elementary and beyond that, obviously, in uh, middle and high schools, able to take products from one app to the next and enhancing them every time you do that. So I'm going to talk about a few apps to do that today. And what we're going to start with is a great app named Skitch. And Skitch is an app that allows you to take visual information, in this case, obviously, photographs. And then it allows you to play with these photographs, add to them, or annotate them. So let's start with um, a new photo. So I've got here a photo, but let's discard changes. And let's take a photo from uh, my photos. And you can see it has full access, because I let it, into all of my photos. Let's try to take this one. So here is a photo and now what I can do is I can actually annotate it to explain what's going on so I can for example um, use text and now I can say um, this is Itai that's my son and he's, he's uh, in this photo that's him and uh, another annotation I can do instead of this, is I can use arrows. So I can actually, I'm um, sorry. Uh, yes, here's my arrow, and I can extend it. This is Itai, right? And then um, I can do something else. For example, uh, I can pixelate if there's a face of somebody. For example, if you're working with students and you want them, you want the faces to not be identifiable, you can do that. Or you can take that away. And once you're done and you've got all the annotation, now you can go to the next phase. And the next phase is really what we talk about when we talk about app smashing. So for example, you can export this, right? And you can see you can mail it, you can Twitter it, you can put it on Facebook. But really, the most important for me is let's save it as a photo. Why? Because when I save it as a photo, I can bring it easily into another app. One of my favorite apps to do that with is Telegami, and in Telegami is where you can bring that picture and you have an avatar, so you have an avatar and let's change my avatar because this does not look anything like me and I want this to look like me, so I can change gender uh, skin tone looks fine, uh, you can make bigger heads if you'd like, or normal sized head, you can have different colors for the eyes, you can have different hair, in my case there's very little of that, so I will go uh, like this, you can change what you're wearing, I will wear a sweatshirt darker, and you can also get different shoes, Sorry, oop, oop. pants, very stylish today. So now you've got your avatar. You can change the emotion. So uh, this is silly, scared, surprised. I like surprised, I think, in this case, or happy. We'll do happy. And then you can set the background. And the background is where you can actually get import that picture that we just created. So remember, we created this thing in Sketch. And here it is. And now it's in the background. 
So now what I can do is I can obviously type, but I can record actually me speaking, explaining what's happening in this product. So I press record. And now we're ready to record my voice. Hi, this is a photo of my niece and my son playing when they were in Miami. And now we've got the voice recording. It's analyzing the voice and will match the Hi. movement. This is a photo of my niece and my son playing when they were in Miami. Lots of opportunities for kids to present. It's their voice, but they can play with the avatar and be very different from who they are or very, very similar. It doesn't matter. And they can create short videos that then can be exported and shared with others. You can save it and then you can share it through Facebook, email, Twitter, or through text, different ways to share the same video. So another thing you can do is bring it into other screencasting uh, apps. One of them, our favorite, that we've been using now, both in the United States and China, is EduCreations, because in EduCreations you can bring multiple photos. So now we're switching from the ability to bring one photo, one background, and talk about it, to bringing multiples. So we can actually bring in the same photo, right? We can bring this one in. And the advantage is that in this one, we can actually change the dimensions and create another layer on top of it. So we can use the color to circle. And we can do this also while we're recording. So this is my niece's name. Her name is Aya, and this is in Hebrew. This is my son, and his name is Itai, and this is what it looks like in Hebrew. So right now, I've created this very short movie. I have to press Done, give it a title, and then what's important again is to save. So I've seen a lot of teachers that worked up to this point and never actually saved their lesson. Usually it's fine because they were just demonstrating something, but sometimes you do want to be able to share it with somebody else or share it with a student who didn't show up. So this is a great way to make sure that both teachers and students are actually saving. So you, I said, I want this to be completely private because I'm just playing. And then you're just saving it. Once it's saved, you can share it and you can also view it as many times as you want. So there's a different aspect to it and it's not just serving you as a whiteboard, but it's actually a saved movie that you can watch. You can see that I've created others as well. Uh, I want to show one more app that allows you to do some of this work. And this app is called Fun Movies. So in Funny Movie Maker, what you can do is you can bring your product and you can animate it and make it come to life. And the way you do that is you can add a new face. So if you've created a face, um, you can bring it from funny faces or you can bring it from your cameras or from your photos. In this case, I want to bring it from my photos. And while it's helpful if it's a face, it doesn't have to be a face. It can be a thing um, as well. So um, let's just find something in my pictures. Maybe we'll bring this one. So here's the photo and I say that's fine. And now what it's going to do is it's going to try and look for my face and my mouth is going to fit over that uh, hole over there. I can know, I'm not sure I can do this with the camera. All I have to do is fit my mouth over it and say something like, press record. Hi, I'm a very hungry monster. Now, hi, I'm a very hungry monster. So this is a really fun way to have kids bring in their product and talk about the whatever they created. Not too long ago, we saw in one of the school districts uh, we work with, teachers bringing in a report where the students chose a picture to represent 
a, a resource and then talk as if they are the resource. So students were having fun, but they were also having to put all of these elements together to find a picture, to work through the process of deciding what the text is, and then to present it to others. Everybody was having fun, everybody was engaged and creating meaningful products. In some cases, the meaningful products that worked even with kids who usually can't create a written product because their writing is not quite there, but their oral language is. So it's an opportunity to let them do things in a different way. So today, we really talked about app smashing in a few kinds of ways, and the ways that you can take a visual product and bring it and create it into something that has audio, video, and of course incorporates the original information. And the content can be really dependent on the assignment you give kids. It is very open-ended and it can be used almost in any subject we teach in school. So I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.